Okay, I'm going to test the sound really quick to see if you can hear me. And I think that you can. All right, friends, according to my uh, computer, it looks like I'm live. It looks like it's recording and I think we are ready to get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check my chat to see who's with us. So let me check really quick. We have, let's see who's with us. We have Debbie and Helen and Barb and Bev and it looks like Lila and Carol. We've got a lot of people out there joining us. We have Sonia. Welcome everybody, bienvenidos. We are working on month eight of the Dresden Project, and so I'm ready to get started. So let's talk about this one because it's a little bit different than the other Dresdens that we've done before. All right, so let me switch my camera view so you can see my hands. So you should have downloaded the handout that says Dresden Project month eight, the forget me not. And I put three jelly roll strips on there because that will give you several flowers and in my finished quilt, this one is going to be kind of like a smaller filler flower. And as you can see, um, by the size of this flower, it is about a five inch finished uh, flower. Um, right on the pattern, it says, trace four sets of petals onto cardstock, and you should be able to get three full sets onto one sheet which means you will need two full sheets of cardstock for yours, okay? And so if you haven't said hello to the rest of us in the chat, just drop that in there. Um, so you need the pattern, right? You need the cardstock, two sheets. Um, one of the things that I said is um, starch and washable glue stick, scraps of yellow fabric, and I'm gonna show you two different methods for doing this. One that uses starch and washable glue and one that uses um, sewing, which is like a traditional English paper piece. So let me start by talking about English paper piecing and why I love it so much. First, I love English paper piecing because of the accuracy. And I'll give you an example. You can take a piece of paper. It doesn't matter what piece of paper you have. So this is just a piece of cardboard. This is a part of a sock. And if you take and you bisect this in any way possible, and you cut all of these pieces out, out of cardstock, using the English paper piecing method, you can take all of these pieces that look like shattered glass and put them back together to make an accurate finished background. And let me show you what I'm talking about. My granddaughter wanted a, um, a pillow that had a unicorn. So of course, what do I do? Um, we were at a retreat last month and I drew this unicorn. I traced it again on some freezer paper and I'm gonna be using this to create an applique for a background. I used English paper piecing to create a giant background that had all of these parts and pieces that went every direction. And so as you can see, this is where the unicorn is going to live. So on her pillow, she's gonna have this unicorn that looks like broken glass, and she's gonna have a unicorn applique in the center. And so the reason I love English paper piecing is because of all the things you can do. So let me roll this out of the way and show you. So one method of English paper piecing that I like to use is a method where you use starch. And so let's talk about the starch method. For those of you who are interested in English paper piecing, I have um, templates on my website and on the YouTube channel, there's a link for um, hexagons in a variety of sizes. But the reason I love English paper piecing is because of how accurate it is. And it's also a very portable project. As you can see, this is just like a five inches tall and like seven inches across. 
And this is my little EPP travel case. And I'm working on a little project and these are my hexagons. But if you notice, there's no paper on these particular guys because I have used my English paper piecing templates and then I have starched them into place and then glued the edges down. So there's no extra sewing and I can travel with these and I can sew them together. I'm gonna to be sewing them together with a little bit of silk thread and I have my pins. But one method of English paper piecing that I love to use involves simply taking your template, folding all of the edges together like this, and then starching it down, removing the paper and using uh, a little bit of glue. And let me show you what that looks like. So let me grab a little piece of fabric just a little scrap. Let me show you how that looks. So if I wanted to do the starch method of English paper piecing, you simply take, and I'm gonna need my pressing board. And you just want your paper to be about a half inch bigger than the piece that you're going to use. I try not to be wasteful. I hate to waste my fabric. But about a half inch border all the way around. And then once I have that half inch border all the way around, I simply pull this forward with a little bit of starch and I just use a little bit of faultless starch. I spray a little bit in a cap. I kept an old cap from another one. And once I spray it in there, I can take a little brush and I can just brush it on the edge. I don't want to get it on the entire thing. And then I slide my paper, I'm gonna pull it over. And then I take my iron and I iron it down. This method works great for um, projects that are just like this that have straight edges. It's less um, accurate for pieces that have curves because you can do EPP with straight edges or with curves. So English paper piecing can be done either way. And so I always do opposite sides to make sure that my pieces are nice and taut. And so I'm gonna go this way. I'm gonna add a little starch. Just barely brush some on, it doesn't have to be heavy. And I'm going to press it down. I'm going to go opposite side, a tiny bit of starch. And if you don't want to get your wool mat starchy, you can always put a little cloth underneath, a little pressing cloth. And I go all the way around my little pieces and I press them down. If your pieces won't stay, you can pin them or you can clip them until they dry. And if it needs a tiny bit more starch, you can. What the starch does is that gives it that um, body that enables your little pieces to hold their shape. I find that this method of English paper piecing works great with batiks. So this is one of my favorite methods for batiks. Okay, so I can take and I can put another clip and I just let it dry. And I set it aside. 
Oftentimes I just make a little stack of these and I just lay them over there and I let them dry. And so then the next step for these, once they've sat and they've cooled and dried, is to actually remove the paper. In traditional English paper piecing, you leave the papers in until you finish sewing all the pieces together and then you take the papers out. In the method that I like to use, I actually have all of these prepared and the paper has been removed. So I will sew them together without the paper attached and so there's not another step later on. Once you've allowed this to dry, and I'm gonna just put a little bit of cardstock on here because I don't wanna get glue on my mat. Once I've allowed this to dry, I take the little clips out and I pull the little paper out of the center and I push all my little corners back down and I give it another little press from this side. And you have to be careful when you press this that you're just laying the iron on top and you're not moving the iron around, okay? Does anybody have any questions about what I've shared so far? By the way, for those of you who were wondering about my finger, my finger is doing much better. If you've noticed, I, I cut the end of my finger off just a, a tad with my rotary cutter. And so you can see my finger's got a blunt part on it now. It's growing nicely. And uh, so, yeah, be careful with that rotary cutter, friends. All right, so there's the piece, right? Pressed like this. And if you want to keep those down, you don't have to um, keep those down. You can actually just pin them. But if you want them to stay down, if you're going to be doing this over a long period of time, you can take a little bit of the washable school glue and these edges can be just glued down with just a tiny bit of glue and you press down. You don't need it on everywhere. You just need it on a couple of these to hold the entire thing together. And maybe this one over here. And this is 100% washable school glue. So it comes right out. You don't have to worry about it not coming out. Okay. And so you can flip that over and give it a little press with a hot iron and that dries the glue. And so there you have a perfect little hexagon with all of the edges folded down and it is ready to add to my box. The reason I wanted to show you that is because for those of you who are not familiar with this method of English paper piecing, this is one of the methods that I like. One of the things you can do with this now, once you have these completed, is you can match these corners. If you notice they are a perfect match because they all come out the same size, is you can lay them on top of each other and then using a little tiny ladder stitch, you're just going to connect that edge that will join these pieces together as so. And so when you're English paper piecing, you're building your blocks together and you're whip stitching them together after they have been shaped. And they're always precise. I love English paper piecing because it's always exact, but with my little tiny hexagons. I love doing them this way. And these are one inch on one side and two inches across. So these are the perfect size for a jelly roll. So if you notice, they fit quite nicely inside of a jelly roll strip. And so this is one of my favorite methods. So if you've never seen that method before, that is one of the methods that I use. And then I just stick my papers in here and I keep reusing my papers. So I only uh, need one sheet of papers. Like I said, you can always use pins. And then of course I have a few that I have folded in half because when you get to the end of a row, you're gonna have to do a partial. Okay, and so that is just one method of English paper piecing that I like to do. And this is my, my travel project that I've been working on. And yeah, my finger's not bandaged, but it is, it is slowly healing. It's got a little chunk of my finger missing there. Fun times, huh? All right, so let's talk about the project that we're doing today. And so the project that we're doing today is an English paper pieced flower, right? And so 
you have two options with this one. You can do the method that I just showed you where you take the entire flower, you cut them out like this, and then you take and you um, lay them and you starch them out. So let me show you what that looks like. So this is what I did. I drew each of my flowers. I left a gap in the middle, right, for this center. The center will, will come later. But I left this gap in the center. So I just drew them. And they don't have to be exact. They don't have to be precise. And then I labeled them, right, the numbers one through five. And when I cut these, there is no seam allowance added because this is the final size of each of these pieces. So when you cut them out, you simply go in here and you cut, you come in from the side. You cut till you stop in this middle area. And these are the sections that you're going to sew together, these sides. And so you're going to stop until you get right here. Once you do that, you can just break these apart like this. And that's going to be the void in the middle of your pieces. Now that I have all of these pieces, I'm simply going to take and I'm going to trim these because these are the exact size of my finished flower. Okay, and so that's what they look like. Once you have all of these cut out, they should nest together like a little puzzle. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I have one, two, right, they fit together three, four, and this is four that goes with the other one, and five. So this is one of my flowers, right? Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfection, but this is how they're going to fit together. So now that I've cut my flower into the petals, I'm going to take the petals and I'm going to attach them to my fabric. And so I was working on one already, so you can see. You can either sew them on or starch them on, and you have to take all of these little pieces, and let me show you how I sew them on. So if you don't want to starch them on or glue them down like I did the other pieces, you can simply use needle and thread, and let me show you what that looks like. I have them labeled, and I just started with the two on the top, I just went this way. And so this is number three. As you can see, they're numbered in here. So it's one, two, that's five, right? So one, two, and five. So this is that top section. And what I've done is I've stitched these to the paper and I will sew these together and then I will remove them. And let me show you what that looks like. So first of all, when you're using your jelly rolls, you're going to want to cut these on the bias. So if you have a jelly roll strip like this, you're going to want to lay these pieces at a 45 degree angle and cut a nice little generous amount so you can fold over. But you want that bias to be on these edges so that you can fold everything under. So there's a piece right there. And I'm just simply going to take and make sure that I have enough. It's at a 45 degree that I have enough fabric all the way around. And then I'm going to pin it together in the middle with a little tiny pin. Let me see, where's my pins? Right here. And this is why I use these micro pins. If you've got chunky fingers or like I was injured before last month, then you might not be able to do this. But I just take and I put a pin in the center. And this is fabric that's been um, not been washed. These are jelly roll strips. I'm just going to pin it in the middle just like that so that it doesn't move. Now I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to use 
some thread that's easy to see. If you notice, I've got red and I'm gonna sew it using that red thread. And the reason I'm using a bright red thread is because I wanna be able to see it in order to remove it. So I'm just gonna take my thread, tie a knot, and I'm gonna put the knot in the front, right? So I'm not gonna put the knot in the back, I'm gonna put the knot in the front. So I'm just gonna make a knot And starting from the bottom, I'm going to crease it with my finger like this, fold um, kind of tight against the edge. You can use a little stiletto right here. And I take a little press of the fabric if it's got a straight edge, and that helps it to stay. And then I'm gonna take the fabric that's on the opposite side, just gonna push it together if I wanted to use a little bit of starch at this point, I could. But I'm just gonna use these straight sides. These are the sides that are gonna get sewn to each other. And I've got a little piece right here that I can either fold under like this, or I can just trim off, it doesn't matter. One way or another, it's gonna be covered up by the center of that flower. Like I said, I could use the starch method with this and a little bit of washable glue, or I could do the sewing method. When I do the sewing method, I start in the front and I capture that fabric from the back and I hold it down nice and tight. And so once I get there, and I take a couple of stitches, I can remove my pin. So I'm gonna go up and down. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna take great big stitches. These are not baby stitches, these are great big stitches. Cause I'm just trying to anchor all of this together. And so I'm just making sure that that fabric is tight against the cardstock. I'm gonna come to the opposite side and I'm gonna grab this from the opposite side because what I want is for there to be some a little bit of tension. And I wanna be able to see those great big stitches when I pull them out later. So I'm going that way. And once I get to this section, I'm gonna come back across. I can go ahead and pull that pin, I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna stuff it over here. And then I'm gonna carefully take this, and I'm still not able to use that index finger, so it's a little bit of a challenge, and I'm gonna kind of wrap this around this top. Like I said, a little bit of starch helps here. So if you wanna brush a little bit of starch along that edge, and then pull it and give it a little press. That kind of helps to hold everything in place and it makes it easier to sew down. And so you're just getting all of that because you're going around that curve, right? And so I'm just gonna take and put a tiny bit of starch along that edge, not too much, just a smidge some people get starch happy. I'm not a starch happy person. I use it sparingly. There we go. And this is why I have this little tool that's metal because it allows me to hold it down and it doesn't melt. I know some people use that purple thingy, but this is actually a pimple popper that I bought on Amazon and it works great. You see it because it's all stainless steel so it doesn't, um, it doesn't rust and it allows me to hold, do, put my, uh, little tool right inside there and pull forward. There you go. So now that I have this kind of pushed all the way around, now I'm gonna come back this way and I'm going to take great big stitches to hold it all down against the little piece of cardstock. 
So I'm going to come here. I'm going to go the opposite side. And as you can see, those are great big giant stitches. Can you see that? Those are not itty bitty fine baby stitches because that's not what I'm going for. Okay. Now that I have all of these stitches, I'm going to come into the center. And I'm going to come out. And then I'm going to bury this through the middle all the way to the top. Can you feel where that little flower kind of curves in? And I'm going to take a stitch and I'm going to bring that backwards. So I'm going to pinch that down like this and I'm going to run my fingernail across there because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create that little curve. So if you notice, I want that edge to be curved on my flower. And so I'm using that thread to pull it down and that's going to stay in place. And so I just take a couple of great big stitches just to kind of anchor that thread, pull it tight, give it the shape I want, give it a little press. And I'm going to trim that off. And this thread will stay in place until I finish stitching my entire, entire flower. Let me see if we have any questions. Yes, I was so happy that my finger wasn't bad off. It's, it's going to be crooked uh, forever. It's got a little chunk missing off the end, but it's healing up nicely. So I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, what kind of starch am I using? I'm just using very basic it's called Faultless Premium Luxe Finish Starch. Um, and it's, it's not crisp, but it's not soft. It's kind of in between. It's like a medium starch. Um, and so now that I have my pieces, now I'm going to do the next bit. So if you notice, they have numbers, right? So these are numbered. So this is three and four. And so what that will do is that piece will fit there and that piece will fit there like a little puzzle. Right? So now all I have to do is I have to sew these together. And so for these, um, my recommendation for these is to use either an ultra fine silk thread and I like matching it in the color. And so the color that I'm going to use for this one is like a teal because that helps it to blend in. If you want to, you can also use a gray. But I love using, what is this, Guterman 100% silk thread. And uh, this is my favorite. So it's very thin. And as you can see, you can barely see it. And so then you simply take Yeah, I saved an old lid and I just sprayed it into the lid and that way it doesn't get the lid dirty. So this is just an old lid from another starch container. And then I take and some people will use single strand. I like to use double strand and I use a needle with a great big eye because none of us are getting any younger, right? And I'm going to do an ultra tiny ladder stitch. For those of you who don't know what a ladder stitch is, a ladder stitch means that you go in on one side like this. So I'm going to take a bite from one side, travel a tiny bit, cross over, take a bite, cross over, take a bite, cross over. And this is what I mean. I'm going to come in from the bottom right here. And I'm going to bury that. And then I'm going to match this up so that it fits exactly the way I want it to. Double check your numbers, right friends? Yes, that is the correct piece. This is why I numbered them. And so I'm going to lay that down and I'm going to go across into the crease. I don't know if you can see it. 
and I'm going to take the tiniest little bite upward like this. So between the paper and the fabric and then I'm going to pull and then I'm going to come across to the other side and I'm going to take a tiny bite along that seam like a little tiny rocking stitch. I'm going to go up and I'm going to come across. And what that does is that eliminates sometimes in English paper piecing you can see the thread on the front side of the pieces. So by doing it that way it eliminates that thread showing on the front of your piece. And so I'm holding them tight against each other. And then I'm coming across back and forth. So I'm going this side taking a little bite and coming up. If you notice, see it? And this is double strand. And then I come up the other side. I'm not grabbing both pieces. I'm just coming back and forth and doing a ladder stitch. And this is why I use the double strand. Every now and again, if you want to stop, you can um, take a little diagonal seam, like a stitch, and then kind of knot it if you want. And what that does is it gives you that stitch up and down, but you can't see it from the front. And so you're just going to do that back and forth. Take a little tiny bite and you're not um, taking a bite of the paper. You're only biting the, uh, the fabric. So you're pushing it with the tip of the needle, right? And you're going across. You can always go across too in a traditional whip stitch. So whatever works for you, but you want to take stitches that are very small and you're going to go back and forth, back and forth. Until you, um, until you get to the end of the flower. The smaller the stitch, the better. And I was happy that I was doing this project because I could do it without my index finger. It didn't, wasn't necessary because I was just holding it with my middle finger. So you're just going across. and you get to the end and this is a really fast process this is a great little relaxing process you could do this um, if you're on a commuter train if you're flying somewhere this is a great little project as long as they let you take um, needle and thread on the plane which most of them do if you do the TSA pre-check they usually don't bother you and so you get to the end of the flower and this one needs two more stitches and then when I get to the end I come back a couple of stitches so I'm going to take a couple of stitches upward and then I'm going to come back just take a couple of stitches I'm going to kind of tunnel on the side like this and take a little move that gimpy finger out of the way and just kind of do a backward stitch or two and that's just to anchor it and then once I'm done I pull this out I trim my thread and my piece is joined to its partner and if you notice you don't see a bunch of stitching on the front and then if you give it a little press, it should lay perfectly flat. And so you have these perfect shaped flowers now. What you have to do now is sew the next one and you're gonna sew it on both sides. So first you're gonna sew this side or you can sew this side and then you sew the final side together. And when you get to this flower, you can just fold it. But this is a great little project. If you've never played with English paper piecing, this is a great way to start. Like I said, your center doesn't have to be perfect because it's gonna get covered up by your middle. So once you do your middle and you cover it up, you won't see the center of your flower. But I love that it gives you these little shapes that are perfect. And this is the Dresden because I started with a circle and then I just drafted the flower and it gave me five pieces, right? 
and it looks really, really beautiful. You can use all of your leftovers. Um, one of my flowers is going to have this striped batik. This works great for a batik. And I'm just going to lay my pieces on here. So you decide how you want this flower to look. I'm using just little scraps from my scrap bin. This is great for practice. So start by cutting it out. Have your five pieces. And then, like I said, you can either use the method that uses starch and glue to give the, sh the petals the shape, or you can simply just sew them like I did and give your petals, um, leave the, the paper in there and create your little flower. Does anybody have any questions or things that they, you need me to address? And so, yes, just to recap, I took a little bit of starch, I put it in a lid. Nothing fancy, right? I took a little paintbrush and I used that wherever I needed to kind of hold down my edges. And this is just a super easy method. It requires very few tools. Get yourself a packet of um, inexpensive cardstock. But if you don't have cardstock, you can always use, like these are the inserts that came with some socks. Um, you can also use all the political flyers that we've been getting in the mail because election day is Tuesday. So those are great because they're on cardstock. And so I cut those up and I use them. I put them to good use instead of sending them to the landfill. All right, friends, I hope that you um, enjoyed this lesson. This is a, a very basic introduction into how to put these little Dresdens together using English paper piecing. You can draft your own, so don't, don't be afraid. Draw a circle with a plate, cut those pieces out, and you can give yourself some beautiful little flowers. I'm gonna be stitching these together and I'm gonna be making about a half a dozen of these. So you can make six of these flowers with three jelly roll strips. Um, the other question that I need to answer before I go is, um, Last time I had to do a video on this one and people asked me how I did the ends. And so what I simply did to get my ends this shape is I folded them in half and then I just trimmed them with the scissor. So I just folded all of these in half and just trimmed them. I didn't turn them back and then I'm just going to press this down and applique it. So this was my daisy. Some people were asking me how did I, how did I get these edges? And I just simply trimmed them with the scissor. And that's all I had to do. All right, everybody, I'm going to be sewing lots more little flowers um, now that my finger is better. And my finger is not required for this because I can use these three fingers to hold my English paper piecing. I'm going to be working on more of these flowers. But we've got one more, um, we've got one more uh, Dresden flower that we have to do before we start putting together our background. And just to give you a preview, we are going to be English paper piecing the next one as well. And just so you can see, I've been drafting my poinsettia. So this one is going to be um, pretty fancy, but it'll give you practice on how to English paper piece. But I simply drafted a poinsettia and then I curved the pieces. So this is a great way to introduce you to curved piecing. And I'm going to show you how to do that next time that we get together for the Dresden Project. All right, friends, you guys have a great Sunday. Get lots of rest in the US. We have to get ready for Thanksgiving, which I call the halftime show of the holiday season. So I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. Don't forget to leave your comments down in the chat if you have questions or there are other projects that you would like for me to work on. I would be super happy to work something up and draft a pattern for you guys. All right, you guys have a wonderful Sunday and this concludes another episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have friends that love sewing, have them join us and we will make stuff together. All right, bye everybody.